Quarantine, day two, Tuesday, March 17th. If you're wondering if I'm wearing the same outfit as I was yesterday, the answer is yes. <sighs> you can see my three-year-old makes quite a mess in here with his room, and it's time to pick it up. Would you like to help me pick up the toys? Yeah. Can I see this? Yeah, you can, yeah, you can sit right there. I have two boxes. Both of them are 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. Yeah. I need to put all the toys in these boxes. The problem is my son is taking up three fourths of one of my boxes. So when I put the toys in there, you have to think about that. To make this a little bit easier, we're gonna assume that each toy has an average of an average volume of six cubic inches. How many toys can I fit in both of these boxes? Remembering that my son is taking up three fourths of this box. All right, quarantine math crowd. I hope you're enjoying your quarantine as much as I am. Uh, it is day two and I am still here. Uh, which is awesome. I also uh, brought my pet snake home from my classroom, Larry. So he is staring at me right now. He must need water. I'm not sure about that. But it is Tuesday, March 17th. So let's dive right into our problem. As you guys know here on Quarantine Math, I like to start with my uh, sides check, which is our word problem strategy I teach. Uh, we have an awesome song about that. Again, you can always listen to. Uh, yesterday our cards didn't pop up, but you can look over here right here and you will see our cards for that. Um, our statement should say, uh, I can fit blank toys in the boxes, right? Um, so I'm looking for any information about toys or I guess listening in this case and any information about the boxes. So again, I would teach my students to identify to circle to box um, but you know some of you watching are adults and you might not do that some of you watching are students and you might have your own way to do it um, unfortunately though you can't identify on a video problem so I'm just gonna go ahead and write down here what I would have identified in the word problem and that is there are two cubes and each one is 12 by 12 by 12 and that is inches was the unit for that um, I also know that Elijah, which is my son, I'm going to put E, uh, he is going to uh, take up three-fourths of one of the cubes, okay? So cube, plural, of one cube. And I also know that there are, or that the toys, um, and it was an average, so not all of them are this, but they averaged out to be six cubic inches. And another way you can write that is just inches cubed. Um, some of you guys might not know that though, so we'll do cubic inches because that's the uh, standard for are you smarter than a fifth grade quarantined student? And so I know the first thing I want to do okay, is I want to figure out if I'm trying to put toys into boxes, how much space do I have? So I'm going to organize this into volume of box one, and that is going to be area of the base times the height, and then I'm going to have volume of box two, and again, that's gonna be area of the base times the height. Now, the good thing for this is they're both the exact same size. So when I do this, I'm just gonna be plugging in my length, my width, and my height. Now, some of you might be saying, Mr. Quarantine Math Dude behind the camera, or the microphone, actually, it's a gaming headset, but I didn't even have a PlayStation. I thought about going to buy one, but it's a different story. I thought it was length times width times height. Uh, yes, that is the volume formula for a rectangular prism, but really where that derives from, where it comes from, is area of the base. So what you're trying to do when you find volume is you want to find the area of the base, and then how many layers of that amount of cubes would you have? So when you don't know the area of the base, you actually break that into length times width, right, because that's your area formula. And then you can multiply that by how many layers or the height. And for this one, it was 12 times 12 times 12. Um, when I multiply this, that's 144, which is a basic fact. And then I'm going to have to show my work over here on my scrap paper, um, which I'll do not on the screen so I don't mess it up. 
and the volume for my cube was 1,728 inches cubed. And then, like I said, the good news was both of them were the exact same size. And so I'm going to go through the process again. Now, some of you guys could just skip this and multiply it by two. Uh, but here at Quarantine Math, we just like to show every step. Um, that way, if you did make a mistake, you can easily find out um, where you did that. Okay. Um, and so we know that both of these had a volume of 1,728 inches cubed. However... Okay, so now I'm done with these two things. I need to remember that my son is taking up three-fourths of one of the cubes. So we don't actually have all of this space. So it doesn't matter which uh, cube you pick to take, um, to take away three-fourths of. But what I like to do, because we like to use tape diagrams and visual models when we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for volume one, just because I have more space over here. Okay, and so here's my tape diagram. And I know that the entire cube was 1,278 inches cubed. Now, no, this is not supposed to be a cube. This is going to be a fraction bar model. Um, so please don't write me angry comments saying I don't know that a, what a cube looks like. And because I'm trying to figure out three-fourths of it, okay, um, I'm going to split this into four equal groups because that was my denominator, okay? And Elijah took up three-fourths of it. So I'm going to put an E here for Elijah, an E here for Elijah, E here for, e here for Elijah. And then that means the rest of it I was able to put toys in, okay? So I'm going to put toys right here. And that's the space I want. Even though it told me the fraction three-fourths, that was how much my son took up not how much the toys took up. So my question mark is only for this one piece right here, okay? Um, and so that's something you always want to be aware of. This is why we label our tape diagram so we don't make that mistake. Um, so if, if you made that mistake, that might be where you start erasing and fixing it as we go. You can pause it and then try to figure out the rest by yourself, and that's totally cool too. And so now what I want to do is I have 1,200 1,728 being split up into four equal groups. I need to figure out how much is in each of those fours. And when you divide that by four, again, if you need help, you can check out our standard algorithm of division song right here. Woo -woo. How many groups multiply subtract bring down? You can even rap during quarantine. It's cool. Okay. Um, that's going to be 432 for each of these. Okay. And so now I know that this is how much space from that cube that I could fill with boxes. So I have a full cube over here, and now I have 432, which means I want to add those two numbers together. So I'll do that right here, 1,728 plus 432, okay? And I'm going to uh, regroup, okay? I got 6 there, got 11 regroup. And so that is going to be 2,160. Ooh, that is not good inches cubed. Now, some people might stop right there and think that's your answer, but this is why I read our statement. Our statement is not asking me for inches cubed. It's asking me for toys, right? And this is inches cubed, which is how, how much space is inside that I can fill with toys. So now I need to figure out how many toys can I fit in that much space. So I'm actually going to go to, uh, I'm going to scroll down Okay, I'm going to get a different color, and now I'm going to use a tape diagram to help me figure this out, all right? And so I have another um, part-whole model here, okay? And if you notice, part-whole and fraction models look very similar because fractions are just division equations. And I know that I have 2,160 inches cubed total, and I'm trying to split that into equal groups as best I can, okay? And I'm going to do 6 inches for this toy, 6 inches cubed for that toy, 6 inches cubed for this toy, 6 inches cu cubed for the fourth toy. And I'm going to go keep going until I can figure out how many toys I can fit inside of this space, right? And so really what this equation is saying is blank groups of 6 is going to give me 1,260. And so I want to rewrite this as division to help me solve for my missing factor. And so I'm going to reuse my fact family knowledge. And this is actually just going to be a divis division equation now to help me figure out how many toys. Let's get a fresh page and finish this up by doing our easy division problem. 
All right, so we're just going to follow our steps. How many groups multiply, subtract, bring down? Which, again, you can listen to that song by clicking this card up here. So how many groups of six go into two? That would be zero. Remember, you got to put your zero here as a place value holder, right? Well, not a place value holder, but um, to show that you have zero thousands. So now how many groups of six go into 21? And that would be three. When I multiply six times three, that gives me 18. More on the floor, go next door, I get three, and I need to bring down my six. And now I have how many groups of six go into 36? And again, that would be six. I'm going to subtract, I get zero and I need to bring down my other zero. Now, a lot of people right here would think they were done because you didn't have a remainder. You were left with zero, which is why it's important to put your zeros when you don't have anything so you know your place values are lined up because you can't be done yet. You don't have anything in your ones place. So how many groups of six go into zero? Zero. And if you want to finish the steps, zero minus zero is zero. So there were 360 toys that I could fit inside of those boxes and yes he does have more than 360 toys okay thank you so much for checking us out today on quarantine math day two we appreciate you hopefully you'll continue to follow along and tune in tomorrow for our third episode um, it's going to be good probably about toilet paper okay right? because you know you need toilet paper if you're going to survive am i right as always please wash your hands Keep your hands away from your face, and if you're sick, stay inside, be safe, do math, I'm out.